Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells, guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our super duper homebrew club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Fixing flat beer, cold conditioning outside, forgetting to add aroma hops, and our 2022 New Year resolutions. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, Episode 262. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com. You can click on that submit a question link at the top of the page, or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Steubing. Today, I'm joined by the director of operations at cmbecker.com right down there, Mr. James Carlson, as well as the president and chief keg washer of kegconnection.com over my right shoulder, this shoulder right over there, Mr. Todd Burns. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks. Hey. Hey. And right now is also a good time. I'm told I don't do this enough. And I, I stopped adding the bumper at the front because I'm on to you guys. Y'all skip the front bumper sometimes. I, I mentioned it to a friend of mine who listens to the show. I go, hey, what do you think about me kind of begging people to like and subscribe and leave a review and all that about the show? He goes, what are you talking about? I go, yeah, at the top, at the top, I had a bumper for the last, a couple episodes. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. He was exposed. He's been skipping. He's been hitting fast forward until they get to the content. How many of y'all are doing that to us? I I, I always do that. <laughs> See? Yeah, I do that. See? Yeah. Both of you. You're killing me, guys. So <laughs> right now is my time to tell you because you're probably hearing it now. But all I'm going to do is create people to fast forward even more. Uh, uh, guys, it's time to fast forward a few <laughs> seconds right now. You jerk. I'll talk slowly. Um, if you're if you're new to the show or new to the channel, we appreciate you here. If you've been here for since day one, I apologize for the first 50 episodes. But anyway, if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell notification to see all the videos as we upload them. We don't just do a weekly podcast. We also upload a bunch of how-to videos, live brew days, all that stuff. If you're an audio-only listener, we would greatly appreciate you leaving us a review wherever you're consuming the show. It means the world to us. And again, someone told me, if you just ask people to do it, they'll do it. But if they skip over your asking to do it, then they don't know to do it. So... Anyway, um, we have a great show lined up. Sorry it's a day late. It has been crazy busy for us at headquarters. Um, poor James has like had so much thrown on your shoulders. You, you and Todd both, I've never seen y'all just have so much to do. And, and Todd's always funny because, Todd, you will have something to do and then something else gets thrown on your plate and that takes all your time. And then you go back to the other thing and you're like a chicken with your head cut off. I think that describes you to this whole week would you agree i don't know i can't respond i don't have a head oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i will say this um so i i was up at headquarters tuesday and wednesday and tuesday we were doing inventory and and helping pack orders and stuff but tuesday i i was wearing a very fashionable coverall i think todd would agree it was super fashionable and i <laughs> don't give me that look but i think so i woke up wednesday morning and the most, like my neck, my lower neck and my upper back, I've never felt this kind of pain in my entire life. I was stiff as a board, couldn't move. And I think it's because I actually worked today, Todd. Or it might have I know. He was, he was going on and on about that <laughs> night. He was like, oh, my God, we worked so hard today. We worked so hard. And I was like, dude, that's just a normal day at the office. 
I try not to complain at all Wednesday because I knew you're going to give me sh Pardon me, Mom. Sorry, I'll bleep that out. You're going to give me grief because uh, you're. if I complained, you'd be like, oh, oh, you work one day and you're broken already? Oh, poor Josh. But it hurt. I'm finally, I'm, I'm fine. I'm drugged up today. Uh, uh, Tylenol, that's it. But a lot of Tylenol. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling much better. Wednesday, I could barely move. I don't know how y'all do that every day. At y'all's age? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, one thing, you know, I stand all day anyway, so. Yeah, you do a point. And I've been told for many years I need to stand while I work. It's, supposedly it's better for you. I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, it just my back hurts otherwise, so I don't have a choice. <laughs> no I way, mean, my back still hurts when I stand, but it doesn't hurt as bad. And when I complained, I think you, you, what you first offered me was, oh, yeah, it gets better when you're 50. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the back and neck pain is only going to get better as I get older. Um, it goes from being every once in a while to chronic. Yeah. <laughs> well, your, your dad's my favorite because when – it's come up before and he's around he'll go he'll i've heard him tell you well son you wouldn't believe how nice it gets when you're in your 80s <laughs> yeah and i told you when you gave me that piece of advice yesterday i go that's cute y'all think i'm gonna make it to my 80s like that's that's nice I'm, i won't have to worry about it getting worse in my 80s i'm not gonna make it to 80 but anyway uh we do have a lot of small talk stuff to go over that's relevant to the show relevant to brewing and all that first we have a new article at homebrewhappyhour.com written by our friend lorena evans a a favorite guest of ours on the show longtime friend of homebrew happy hour and author of many articles on the site she wrote one on on carbonation, ideal carbonation levels for uh, beer or any beverage, really. And Todd made the nice chart that I've embedded on, on the article. Uh, you color coded it for us. So that good collaboration between Todd Burns and Lorena Evans on the article. Also, or did you want to add something, Todd? You took a breath like you're going to talk. No, no, go ahead. Oh. Also, we are uh, next week. I think Monday we have a Topo Chico clone. I'm actually drinking one. I almost drink one every morning. I also have Topo Chico or air quotes. I have it on tap. I make it myself. And sometimes I reuse the plastic bottle like this and fill it with my home stuff. So when I go out in public, Todd, people don't think I'm poor. They think I'm drinking the good stuff. But, um, we have a Topo Chico clone recipe. Todd measured out all the minerals that are available to achieve the water profile of, um, what is it, Serra del Sia, or what is the name of the, the area they're in in Monterey? Topo Chico is in Monterey, but what's that mountain range? It's like Cerro de, del Sia? I don't know. De la Sia? Either way, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's available online and uh, the our recipe, our clone and a printable sheet will be on homebrewhappyhour.com on Monday. Also, uh, Trub Club recipes in December have all shipped out. If you in, if you told us what kind you wanted uh, in regards to all grain extract, how you wanted your milk, your grains milled, that's all been done. I packed the majority of them, unless you received it and something was wrong, then it was probably Todd and not me. But we, um, that, that's what broke my neck and back last week or earlier this week was uh, getting all those orders out for Trub Club. But we do have an announcement for Trub Club January 2022. Your recipe, y'all can't see it, guys, but our viewers can. Up on the screen, there it is. Smash the Galaxy IPA, that's a single malt and single hop using Galaxy Hops. And that's what we're going to be making for the month of January. And I volunteer Todd to do the brewing on the you know, Smash the Galaxy. I, I, do we have everything right now that I could brew it? We, we do. Because I'd like to brew it ahead of time. Yeah, we, we do. Yeah, you could take, take it home today and, and brew it. We, we, when you do that, we might have to order some hops, but we don't ship these out until the end of the month anyway. When you're in the Trub Club, we ship out recipes towards the end of the month that we give everyone a chance to, to sign up and to let us know how they want their recipe. So you can go ahead and take a, because you're going to do a 15 gallon batch. So take what you want today and brew it. And then we can talk about it by the time we get them shipped out. Okay. Yeah, we've got enough Galaxy hops. Yeah, we do. That that was one of the reasons we we chose it, and that was one of the reasons why the ESB got delayed. You know, if you're new to the show, this is all you know Greek to you. But we at Ked Connection got out of the ingredient stuff, so we've been trying to to get 
all that offloaded. We finally got all that off the site because our inventory was messed up. People were ordering. We were like, no, let's let them order what we have left. And then that'll help get rid of the stuff. But then we realized our inventory wasn't tracking properly and people were ordering things we didn't have. So we just got rid of mo- like 99% of all that's off the site now. So if you go there and you're like, oh, no, I, w- I wish I could get that recipe. Join the Trub Club because we're still going to be brewing those recipes and sending them out just exclusively through Trub Club. And we're publishing the actual recipe sheets on homebrewhappyhour.com over time. I'm trying to do one a week. So you'll still have access in a way to your favorite recipes through ketconnection.com. Just not able to order the kit anymore because we're done. We're out of the recipe business in regards to ingredients and all that. We're just draft beverage dispensing specialist people. But so January, let me put it back on the screen. Smash the Galaxy IPA has that Trub Club seal of approval. I'm excited about it. Even though IPAs are not my thing, I know uh, we've had people really talk up this recipe. Apparently, Galaxy is a very popular um, uh, aroma hop, and people people love it. So, and and these recipes use a bunch of it. So, I hope you like it. Um, also with Trub Club, some uh, on the business side, starting in February for the recipe receiving tiers, it's not a lot, but we're having to add five dollars to every recipe receiving tier, bumping the price up by five dollars. And got, this is really only to try to offset the insane increase in shipping uh cost that is yeah. hitting us. <laughs> like, it, it we're, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bombard our recipe receiving tiers with like, hey, we got to raise it by 50. 15 bucks guys uh, and even then that wouldn't cover like our um our recipe receiving tiers are some of my favorite people because i like brewing with them and i love their passion for brewing but it is also one of the tiers that w- is you know not uh it's not a wash that would be uh, not sincere but it's definitely not uh, uh it, we, this is not a money-making endeavor so the, the price increase is literally guys just to try to help offset the shipping cost on us and ingredients have gone up everything's gone up and anything if you're in retail at all or any business at all for the last two years you know what's been going and on it, it's going up five dollars right because you said five and then you started talking about 15 oh no 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 I, yeah let me let me talk slower Five dollars is the increase on every recipe receiving tier. What I when I said fifteen, I meant I didn't want to start raising it by a cost that would actually offset what shipping's gone up. That's what I meant when I said that. Because like James was telling me, uh, a handful of them were twenty some odd dollars to get the recipe, and that wasn't even the people who were up in far away from us. You know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it's crazy how much FedEx has gone up on the rates and. It's hard to make money if they if all the profits go into the shipping charges. It, it really, yeah, and th- and that's and that's what it. And again, it's not like oh guys, we're trying to make money. No, we're trying to not have this cost us money because the whole idea of our our Patreon portion for Trub Club is people who want to support us and we want to give you something back in return. It, uh, we can't just take you know we can't eat the losses on a recipe to ship it to you because that's not even in the spirit of what patreon is <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah and so each recipe receiving group we're just trying to get it back to when we started this a couple years ago where it's you know it's pain at least pain for itself and covering shipping and all that it's just it is crazy how in just 24 months, how different cost of goods is, how different shipping yeah. is. And and we use FedEx. I know not everyone's a big fan of theirs, but believe it or not, they still have the best rates. Like U- USPS by is far. by far. And I know, right? Where, regardless of how you feel about them, they're still the best rates. So we, we continue to work with them. But yeah, that, that'll start February. If you're in January right now and that affects your decision, whatever, just hit me up through Patreon or email Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com and I'll take a screen shot of what it cost me to ship your recipe to you and then you'll go oh i'm sorry and i'll say no no video but if you, you know we have people who come and go all the time and let me clarify we love you all if you don't brew as frequently and you and you want to get out of the tears guys our friendship and our our admiration of you is not contingent on you giving us money but todd will say he does like you more when you're in those club in, in those tiers I, I think that's right yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like people that support us. Did you? More. I, I didn't have your. I, hey, uh, by the way, look, I have retro. I was just about to say. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll both have homebrew. I, 
I've got a so, Imperial Yeast shirt on. So I like the Imperial Yeast. I have a bunch <laughs> of those, and I don't See, know. I can how, only I wear them. this one. I can only wear this one when it's really cold. <laughs> he hates the ones that have a lot of text vinyl. The big um, yeah. Yeah. He hates us. Yeah, if you're on YouTube, uh, this is a good time to also push our – if you go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on, I think, store or merch, I forget what it says. This is our very popular sweatshirt, Homebrew Happy Hour, Der Bestie Podcast Aller Zeiten. You can get that through our store. This is – we use Teespring. I think they're called Creator Spring now. I've washed this shirt, no joke, over 100 times, and look, it's still holding up very well some people worry when sublimation um or screen printing that oh how, lo- how long have you had that uh since it po- since we released it 18 months ago pre- 18 months ago huh. pre- it was pre-covid so over t- maybe over two years ago now um it, wow. it, i've had it a while it's, and it's long sleeve it is it's a sweatshirt so you wash it 18 times a month I wait. Well, no, you're right. On average, including the sum. Oh my God. I'm bad at math time. Okay. <laughs> I bet you I wash it. I wash- you said you wash it over a hundred times. That would be over. That'd be 18 times a month. How many times? Re- okay. Without hyperbole. <laughs> uh, that we can go on. Let's go on to the questions. Come on. <laughs> okay. So all that all. And one last thing, our, our giveaway for January, 2022 is going to be a beer line cleaning kit with a 16 ounce sand step sanitizer. The winner will, uh, the drawing for our winner will be on Monday. Uh, eight ounce, eight ounce. Pardon me. Pardon me. Eight ounce of sand step. Pardon me. Sorry. A, 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 oh, what, uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Did you say sand step or did you say, I said, sand what step. are we sending them? I'm sorry. We're, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. We're, I, are we sending them a beer line cleaning kit? We're sending them two things. Uh, the, uh, one winner, Todd, you, you got to listen when I talk one winner. God, you're just going. La, 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 la. One, I can't, I can't understand. one winner um, okay. is going to get a beer line cleaning kit and a, okay. and a 16. Ounce oh yeah. You're right then. 16. Sand ounce. Step. Okay. Yes. And yeah, that eight ounce brew clean, 16 ounce sand step. Yes. Okay. And that winner will be determined uh, with a random drawing on Monday, January 31st at noon central. This is, giveaway is available to any member of our Trub Club of any from the $1 tier up to the 15 gallon recipe receiving tier. All you uh, will be entered automatically if you're in our Trub Club through patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. And every tier has a. Uh, a given amount of entries. The highest tiers have the most entries, the lowest tiers have the lowest amount. It made sense. So go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club or patreon.com forward slash homebrewhappyhour to learn more about everything I just <laughs> to Todd. So we have three questions and then a discussion. So let's get started. Our first question for this week's episode came from our buddy Dan W, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Dan wrote, My first kegged beer tastes flat. Is the fix as easy as raising the PSI on my gas regulator, or do I need to raise the PSI and start the forced carbonation rocking process from the beginning? I'm new to kegging and feel terrible for already messing something up. I hope I can fix this. Cheers from Florida, Dan. Now, guys, isn't it the understanding that you'd rather have your beer undercarbed than overcarbed once it gets to the point of serving? Isn't that our kind of... Like, I feel like I can always recover an undercarb beer. Uh, overcarbed is a whole different beast. So Dan's undercarbed. Todd, what would you say to him for fixing this flat beer? Well, first of all, you didn't mess it up. You're just not finished yet. So uh, you just need to add more carbonation. And you could, you know, you, you could do that by increasing your PSI. But but really, your your PSI... You know, we just published that article that that shows the volumes of of CO2, and you can look it up, and it'll uh, you can go to Homebrew Happy Hour, pull that up, and it'll show you that you know if you want to get a certain volume, blah blah blah. But really, let's just keep it simple. You're probably going to want to carbonate it to about somewhere between ten and twelve psi, depending on the style of beer. or you may have four beers in your kegerator and you just say, okay, I'm going to do everything to 12 PSI. Uh, you know, you can get as simple or as complicated as you want, but yep. if you put it on 12, let's say you're going to put it on 12 PSI and that's what you want to carbonate to, then eventually it will carbonate, but you're going to have to wait a while. So you don't have to start the process over. You just need to add a little bit more and you could do that by 
turning up the PSI to say 30 or 40 and rocking it a little bit, but be careful because the only thing worse than under carbonating your beer, as Josh said, is over carbonating it and you don't want to over carbonate it. So what I typically do is I get it to where I'm like, yeah, that almost has enough carbonation in it. Then I set it to my PSI and you're so close to it within a day or so you're going to hit that that proper level. And he mean when you at the end there he means his serving PSI. When he says he sets it to his PSI, he that he means his serving PSI, right Todd? Yeah, he means his serving PSI. No, I mean PSI. you. I mean you meant your serving PSI. When you just said I set it to my PSI when I get just close, I set it to my PSI because Yeah, the, the 12 PSI. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and James, I love how you you and I just sat back cuz cuz we've both messed up carbonation before uh to the point where i have ptsd when i do a beer often i bring it to todd and he goes oh is this carbonated and i'll pretend like i forgot i purposefully forgot to let him do it because he'll go did you even carbonate this yet oh darn it i knew i forgot something well you could you could you can carbonate it'll be fine because todd is so persnickety about carbonation levels but uh todd is this one of those instances where you would do it you're fixing it, you're getting there, and you're checking with the CM Becker event faucet still? Like anytime you're you're doing carbonation, you have that, or could you test at a high PSI off of just his tap to, to determine it, you can use any faucet. You just if you don't have a flow control faucet, you gotta you gotta take all the you gotta take all the pressure out of your tap. Otherwise you're gonna blow the beer glass out of your hand. It's gonna have so much pressure coming out. So uh, really what's gonna happen, you yeah, unless you're really weak, you'll probably hold on to the glass, but you're going to get foam and beer everywhere. So, you know, pull all the CO2 out, connect your uh, gas again at your serving pressure. You know, I would say between 10 and 12, let it come back up to that, serve a beer, see how the carbonation level is, add more or decide, well, I'm really close. I'm going to let it finish out uh, by just leaving it at serving pressure at that point. Now, let's, for the sake of conversation, because this begs the question, and I'll have it in my inbox, and instead of waiting for another week's episode to bring it up, what? let's say Dan does this, uh, or anybody does this, and they, act, and they feel like they accidentally overcarb it. What advice, Todd, do you give to the man who it feels like their beer is overcarbed? Um, lower your pressure, your serving pressure, and serve beer until it gets starts to go down a little bit and then put it back up to the normal serving pressure that you want. Do you purge the keg and then lower the PSI? Yes. You're right. Okay. I knew, I knew you did. I was, I was trying to throw you a bone there cause you forgot to step. You- I, I take all the pressure out. Yeah. And then, and then put it back, you know, lower the pressure. I I've, I've done that on accident. This, um, this keg of Kolsch before I started drawing from it, I forgot that I left it at like 20 or at 30 for a few days. And, um, I, I had to purge it, lo- lower it a lot. And then fortunately only the first couple of, only the first pour could have been bad, but I have that event faucet. So I was able to dial it in and still, you know, just pour super slow and, and fix it. But the beer itself, thankfully never had, like too much residual carbonic acid is that if you over carb, is that a risk that you have James is like, can the beer ever resolve from being over carb or will there always be like an infusion of too much carbonic acid? Well, I mean, if, if you're talking about t- typically what I do and I've kind of learned my lesson on over carbonating is I'll under carb it just a tad and then I'll just let it set it at serving pressure and it'll, it'll balance out. And it'll finish out in just a few days. So, you know, if you ever do over carbonate, we we ran into that. If you remember at Homebrew Con one year, we actually had to shake the keg and let it settle out a little bit and vent it, shake it and vent it, just like you would uh, like a, a bottle of Coke. You know, it you you've got to be able to get the CO two out. It is possible, but I, I do I, remember I that. Worry about you know if you're a little low, don't worry about it. Just uh, just let it set it serving pressure and it'll it'll adjust it'll dissolve into the beer and and you'll be good Uh, i'd much rather do that than risk over carbonating right and and i'm the same way too and again if it wasn't for todd's 
um, uh, bluntness. I was trying to think of the nice way to say he's a jerk to me. Like if you if you mess up the slightest one time, he never lets you forget. And so I'll be damned if I ever overcarbonate another beer for Todd Burns again, because I have PTSD every time I'm forced carbon a keg for him. That's like like I said. That's why I just for, act like I. It forgot. sounds like I'm helping you then. <laughs> that's what you always tell me when I, when I stop messing up. You're like, well, you don't mess up anymore, do you? That, okay, okay, fair enough. That's a good point, Todd. That's a good point. I don't mess up. But anyway, yes, this is my nice segue to saying we do have that chart Todd made up published in the article at Homebrew Happy hour.com if you want to be absolutely precise it has the the chart range from temperature and to psi and and it'll help you dial in 100 percent if you care that much to be that specific i also think maybe i should embed it in that article too todd your forced carbonation video i've had to reference a few times when i sometimes get a brain fart and i know oh i can just pull up youtube it's highly trafficked for a reason, your your video on forced carbonation, because a lot of people want to just do it real quick and not worry about it too much. And I think your method is the tried and true, do it this way, the, the rocking for a few minutes and set it in the fridge. And you actually start serving pretty much immediately after you force carb, don't you? Yeah, I have a beer as soon as I'm done. I'm usually <laughs> fairly intoxicated. I'm usually... Remember when I had to force carbonate uh, those six beers for the party not too far back? You were sloshed. I was fairly sloshed by the time I finished uh, force carbonating them all, so I didn't have to pour a beer afterwards. He didn't. He was. I just went to bed. I just went to bed. <laughs> anyway, Dan. See, one of the things that happens when you're force carbonating is you're constantly trying the beer. So you're like, oh, yeah, that's good. And then the other thing, too, I should probably mention is, when you pour beer out of the fo- so this is important and a lot of people might miss this when you pour, after you force carbonate another 30 seconds or another minute or however long 15 seconds however long you decide to do it you can't just pour some beer in, out of the faucet and try it because the beer you're pouring if you're just doing a sample of, of a few ounces contains beer that was from the old carbonation level because it's in the hose. So you have to pour that out and you have to drink it because we don't like to waste beer. Waste not. And then you have to pour some more out and taste the carbonation level. So if you're doing a bunch of them at one time, it can be fairly dangerous. It can be fairly dangerous. That's <laughs> the Todd, Bur- we're going to make a PSA from Todd Burns. <laughs> anyway, Dan, thank you so much for submitting your question. This is a great time to remind y'all if and when you submit a question for our show we and we take it on air, we do give you a $25 gift card to kekconnection.com moving on to question number two this was a text message from our buddy paul using our hotline at 325-305-6107 paul texted hey gang short and sweet cue for you can i put my fermenting bucket outside to cold condition if ambient temps are forecasted to be in the 30s all day now paul i'm gonna throw todd under the bus because before we start, yes yes you can before oh oh i wasn't gonna ask permission i edit this show i no, no no i'm, I'm answering his question yes yes oh no can. no no i'm yeah. telling him what you called him before we started recording you said no i've never said that there's dumb questions before but this one might be a dumb question you told him you told me paul i here's why i took the question First off, because I love people that use the hotline. We would re- we would prefer a voicemail next time, Paul, but thank you for using the hotline. Um, I took it because I don't have context, so this was a question that we could elaborate on because in San Marcos, Texas, right now, it is 32 degrees. It is going to wow. be... It is, I know, right? It is going to be... Uh, it, it was 14 when I came to work. So no! Right now. No! How, God, Lee, y'all are always so much... And drier up there, too. It's colder and drier. Um, but I... I could put my bucket. I actually have right now uh, two buckets of Kolsch that are going into cold conditioning today. Uh, I In my fridge, though. I could put these outside, right, Todd? Because, oh, that's like, what is the range for cold crashing? Y'all would say 30, uh, ideally like 36 to 40, right? Is ideal for cold conditioning or anything that's not freezing and, and less than 42? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, our, we don't really, James and I would love to cold crash colder, but we can't get our systems to go down any colder than <laughs> what, what, what's the coldest you can get at James? 
on yours uh, on the on the blankman conical we can get it within two degrees of the chiller yeah but on the other one it's probably 38 or no nah, probably four closer 40, to 40 yeah over so 40. i i i generally cold condition if i'm doing it in the uh, on my chiller using my chiller I, i'm usually around 40 if i if i put it in uh glass carboys and i put it in my beer cooler it's usually 36 to 38 because that's where i keep that uh, but yeah, if you could get it down to 34, that would be even faster. I mean, it, it's more of a speed thing than anything else. Well, and I that, think, right, and, James? Go ahead. Yeah, and, yeah, I, and actually, and I, what I target for is just as cold as I can get it without risking freezing it. So, I mean, if you can, if you've got a really good chiller or you've got a really good way of, uh, even if it's a closet with a, you know, a, a controller, 35 would be ideal hey i that's feel what i try to go for did your mic do i feel like your mic got turned away from your mouth it got real quiet did it i don't know yeah do you talk yeah i'm sorry oh, i'm trying no, to oh no you're good now type. no no i hear you great now um sorry that was me and i'm not gonna edit that out um i wh- why i like paul's question though is because i thought you know what that's not a bad idea i'll do that but my forecast for it 30s is ending tomorrow Tomorrow it's going to be in the high 60s, and then Sunday it gets back down. And so, if there's fluctuating temps, Todd, because you don't just cold condition for one day. You your easy answer is yeah, go for it. But what if Paul had said, "I'm going to be in the 30s for three days, and then in the 50s for the rest of the week"? Would you still say, "Yeah, cold condition outside"? That's a great idea. I would say, yeah, cold condition outside until it gets to the fifties and then put it in the cooler. <laughs> okay. okay. I, I just, I, I mean, it's just temperature. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how else to describe. I mean, no, it's no, temperature. No. no, you're right. You, but, but just the disdain you had for me for even taking Paul's question when I, I, I can relate to it. And again, and I just thought of the nuances like Paul, if you're, if, if you're planning on only doing an outside cold conditioning and, and you have, six days on the low end of these temps then yes confidently put it out there because i don't know of anyone who cold conditions for less i would say seven days i think a week is pretty standard on the low end of cold conditioning obviously on the high end people do it for months and months and months right they brew a mars in and then they cold condition it until september so yeah like that's on the high end on the quick end if you're doing it like for my colch for clarity a week is on the low end still, but I could get by with just doing it for a week. So if I had a week full of 32 to 40 degrees, then I might do that just because it's not fun to have to make room in my fridge. I don't have a dedicated fermentation chamber yet. I'd love to. We'll talk about that more when we talk about our 2022 resolutions. But yes, if you have the amount of time that you think is needed for your cold conditioning in ambient temperature outside, I feel like you can confidently do it. If you're going to have fluctuating by 20 some odd degrees or more, is there a risk of any off flavors, James, if he put it outside and then it got up to the sixties and then went back down? Is there any risk of doing that? Or or off flavor? It'd have to get really warm, but I would say that if you, if you got it in a position to where, you know, it's going to be stable temperature, then I think you're safe. But if it's going to go from 30 like you said, to over 70 and back down to 30, you know, it is a possibility that it could. But one thing that that we do when we're conditioning, the most important thing, I think, is it, it clarifies better. You know, so it, it, it all the sediment settles out. It, there is some flavor changes, you know, it takes, especially if you're, you're working like with stouts or something with a high grain bill, they tend to to work better as as they taste better as they condition out, but uh, I like cold conditioning for clarity more than anything else. And I'm sure I'll get some feedback on that. But that's the reason why I do it is just to try to get it as clear as possible without having to filter it. And I think that's why we all three of us do it, right? I mean, the only time I ever yeah. see Todd transferring to secondary is for clarity, isn't it, Todd? Yeah, and aging. I mean, aging. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, and you accomplish all the above through the cold conditioning, like you. Yeah, and with a stable colder temperature. I mean, a lot of beers to me are better if they sit in the secondary for you know for a month and they don't have a lot of yeast. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, we a lot of times we've had a beer and we've tried it and we've said, "Eh, that's all right." Uh, it seems a little off or something, and then we try it a month later and we're like, "Wow, that's fantastic." 
I'm, so, I'm uh, actually, and the benefit yeah. is it, it tastes better, but it also is a little clearer, uh, clearer yeah, too. Yeah. And, and yeah. And we're not, we're not snobby on aesthetics, but guys, you don't understand. Like it's the whole, no, we're, we're snobby on aesthetics. <laughs> well, well, like I we, am. We've talked about it on the show and James will agree because we've talked about this many a times off the show too. The, the sensory perception is a huge part of the beer drinking experience. And yeah. when you hand someone a perfectly poured from a CM Becker V10 faucet, you know, uh, Kolsch with the right amount of head and it's clear as day and, and you hand it to someone and they try it and like that already sets the mood for them. Like, wait a second, y'all brewed this as opposed to like a bunch of cloudy yeasty boys floating around in there because you, you didn't take the time or, or just do the simple process of cold conditioning for, and let the beer clarify. And you didn't set your carbonation right. And so it, yeah, yeah. perception is a huge deal of the ju- beer drinking experience for us, at least. Um, yeah. Some people are and just alcoholics. Thing to think about, Another thing to think about, too, is a lot of that German yeast, especially back when they first started using the lager yeast, was really powdery. So uh, they they stored them, of course, to get the taste better. But it also it required a lot of storage to get clear, to drop out clear because the yeast was so powdery. And, uh, you know, that could that'd make a big difference. But Todd's right. I mean, taste is everything, but it also helps clarify the the beer itself. Absolutely. So yes, Paul, the short and sweet answer that took me 15 minutes of arguing with Todd about is, yeah, you can cold condition outside. Just take all that other context into consideration too and and just know what you're doing. But that made things simple if you can just stick a bucket outside. Would y'all cover his, the, is the bucket? Like, I don't know how many buckets exist out there in the world, but like the buckets we sell at catconnection.com still um are those uv proof enough or if y'all stuck it outside todd would you cover it with the trash bag to prevent uh ultraviolet rays from ruining the beer probably i just wouldn't do it outside because okay, you don't need to see every it, you're right i probably wouldn't do it outside but if you did it it probably made sense to cover it yeah i can t- let's move on from this question todd is done with this question <laughs> thank you paul for submitting that though feel free to ever submit them again as short and sweet as you want and i'll take every single one think of something even more irritating to todd and i'll take that question on next week's episode all right moving on to question number three came from our buddy brandon who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com brandon wrote hi josh and crew i am writing to you after a sunday brew day Everything went smooth until I realized I forgot to add the half ounce of aroma hops at the end of my boil. I didn't come to this realization until after transferring my wort to the bucket and pitching my yeast. Should I open up the bucket and throw the sterilized bag of hops in, or is it too late for this batch? Brandon. Ooh, I actually, on my Saturday, New Year's Day brew day, forgot to throw in the whirl flock. And thankfully that didn't really do anything. But aroma hops, have y'all, we've all had flubs in our brew day. James, have you ever forgotten mm-hmm. the aroma hops? And if you did, what advice, or even if you didn't, what advice do you have for Brandon in trying to save the effect that an aroma hop does for your batch? Oh yeah, what you can do is uh, just throw it in after high krausen. Um, you you don't want to do, you don't want to put it in during uh vigorous fermentation because the co2 can scrub the aromatics of the hops off so you want to make sure it's done for the most part done fermenting and then you can put it in or you can put it in the secondary i don't secondary like todd does so i would put it in right after high krausen's over and then you could put it in there and then let it settle out and you should be good to go five days todd you agree or do do, would you handle it no that's exactly what i would do I think if forgetting the aroma hops, uh, Brandon. I mean, uh, you're going to get aroma. It's going right. to be, I mean, you're going to be happy with it. Well, and you, you, haven't yeah. me- you haven't messed anything up. Right. And I was going to say, uh, uh, people dry hop for the sake of adding aroma. So it may have been different than what you would have had if you had added it during flame out or, or uh, 10 minutes or whatever it was for your schedule, your hop schedule of your specific batch, Brandon. But dry hopping will still add the desired aroma in my opinion for that batch he didn't tell us what he brewed um i i didn't reach out to him to ask him for context but i imagine you're gonna be fine it's not like someone i know 
forgot to add um, uh, the coloring malt to a pale ale they brewed. And I think that had more of an effect than. Wow, that is so funny. I was going to bring that up a minute ago. Well, and I decided really... not to, but you brought it up yourself. Well, wow. Because, well, because he, poor Brandon, I mean, people write in and with mistakes, or I say mistakes in air quote, like when they feel like they messed up, I feel the shame in their text. And I want to tell them, don't feel ashamed. Here's how I messed up even worse than you did. And yeah, because his in his situation, it's easy for him to fix it. Whereas in your situation, we, we were just screwed. We were not. It only affected the color. The flavor was minimally affected. It was. <laughs> hey, a, I did that with the schlussel. Your, well, you your, remember that? And your blonde alt is still one of yeah. the best alts you've ever brewed. People <laughs> actually. The one I did the. Remember we did the. Oh the. What's the word? I'm the blonde salt. <laughs> We where I uh, I cooked the uh, grains. Oh, the deto- uh, the detoxin. Yeah, decoction. Yeah. The quick decoction on it, and it, yeah. it 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 surprised me how how well it turned out. Do you well? First off, we haven't brewed an Alton forever. On any of the, you've done decoctions for loggers before. When have you have you been mm-hmm. doing any decoctions on these last few batches? <sighs> you know, I've been lazy. I haven't <laughs> been doing it. My brother. Uh, <laughs> 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 i did uh i can't remember the last time i did one um i like it when i like it when my <laughs> habits rub off todd it's good. <laughs> i i'm a virus at the office that's why you don't want me up there too long <laughs> a virus i like that <laughs> yeah when, 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 when we're about to probably hire a new person maybe you should not come up every two weeks for a while yeah, don't train them. Josh, can you not train <laughs> Let me them? get them trained before uh, before you make an appearance, okay? Yeah, I like that. All right, back to Brandon's question, though. Uh, some of the some of the nuances from it so that we can cover to make sure. He already mentioned that he's going to be using a bag, and, and it's going to be a sanitized bag. Do you all recommend if you're dry hopping after the fact? I mean, I recommend using a, a, a hot bag, and obviously you need to make sure it's sterilized so you don't introduce yeah. any um, any contaminants. But I always use a bag because I hate having hot particles stuck in my teeth. And the bag prevents the, the hops from, from, from being drawn up when you eventually keg it. Uh, well, pardon me. Let me reverse. I've only dry hopped in the keg one time because we forgot to dry hop in secondary. And we just threw them in. And I, my dip tube wasn't cut. And so it was at the bottom. And I drew in all those hops for the first 25 pours. And it was disgusting. So would you all agree with Brandon? Yes, use a hot bag. Yeah, and, and when, when he says sanitize, I, I would not use sanitizer though. I would boil the hot bag. Well, he had, he actually yeah. said sterilized, which I, I know. Oh, I, I thought you said sanitize. I I'm said sorry. I said sanitize. Yeah, just make sure you don't boil the hops in the bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing because I, y'all are telling me that because y'all think I would do it. Um, you're right. Yeah, that would be that would be funny though. If yeah, you, yeah. Boil your hop bag <laughs> by itself, then take it out, put the hops in it, and put it into there. Yeah. Well, and we've done questions. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> <laughs> we've done questions like this before, where also people use vodka. They soak the bag in vodka or or mm-hmm. gin. That would that would work too. I uh, I think we determined in previous episodes you don't get residual flavors from it. Uh, like it, it's just a sterilization method. So. Unless you're using the some some flavored vodka, maybe you would get residual flavors. But uh, yeah, sterilizing the bag is easy as boiling it, adding your hops, throwing that in your secondary or your keg or whatever you're dry hopping in, and then enjoying yeah. in the benefits of dry hopping for the aroma. So yeah, like like Todd said, the two questions we had today about did I mess up? Neither one of them did, Todd. Neither one of them actually no, messed no. up. Neither one of them messed up. Yeah. And, and this is also, you know, a good time to remind people that relax, don't overthink it and uh, just enjoy the process. It takes a lot of of carelessness, I think, to actually legitimately mess up your batch. And the things that like were brought up today, oh, I undercarbed, easy fix. Oh, I forgot my aroma hops, easy fix. It may not it may not have ended up the exact way you wanted it, but they're easy fixes. So, Brandon, Thank you so much for submitting your question. Moving on, we've had this time of year and at the end of last year, we always get these kinds of questions. So I just meshed them all so we'd have a quick discussion. What are our 2022 resolutions with brewing specifically? Todd, I don't need to know about your losing weight and and, <laughs> and all those resolutions, but you're actually in dry January. You're probably going to drop some pounds. So I'll start off with James 
Do you have any plans, anything you'd like to accomplish brewing wise for 2022? Uh, what does the year have in store for James Carlson? I don't really do any resolutions because it never, never works out. So <laughs> why bother? Um, but I'd like to do, I just like to perfect a, a really good German Pilsner. You know, that's, that's my goal this year is to have a really, the kind that we have with that Pilsner bite, I have not been able to do that successfully. So I want to, I want to work on that really good German Pilsner. And then maybe we can add it as a recipe in our, tr- in our truck club. I would love that. I'm going to add a resolution Wait. for you though. The resolution for you is to, for us to film that filter video. That's my resolution yeah. to do yeah, with there's you. There's a lot of people that ask me about that. I mean, I, you told me you were going to get it done, and it hasn't been done. <laughs> Throw I, me I actually book. think that that we should make a, a pack right now, a resolution, not a resolution, but agree right now that if James does that, we will make an exception where we're just doing one recipe now, and we will offer people, and you're going to have to do it way ahead of time so we can get the ingredients and everything, but we will offer people the ability to either do that lager or an ale for those who can't do a lager. How about that? Uh, ideal yeah. blood pact. Let me, all right. Blood pact. Um, but, but that would I, I think really good with the, with the coal yeast from Imperial. Yeah. Uh, but I think James, if you're going to do that, you're instead of just the directions and we send the ingredients out, you're going to have to, we're going to have to write something up that where you talk about what you've done specifically to make, to be successful in that. Okay. Do you think that decoction will be a part of your perfection? No. Okay. Cause no, I didn't, no, I, no, I didn't, I didn't think so gonna... either, but that's always like some people ro- uh, romanticize. And I, I don't mean that in the pejorative way, but they like, Oh, when I do this double decoction is what made all the difference. And it might for a specific style, but like for a Pilsner, it's probably not necessary to perfect that style. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, there's a lot of people that won't, don't have, any interest whatsoever in doing it. And in fact, if you, if we put the recipe out there, said that you had to do it, probably people wouldn't want. No it. one would choose it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're right. But I, I like this. I re- I think you could perfect it by summer, and we could offer it by the third or fourth quarter of the year. I think that's a oh, good or, or way earlier than that. Well, I just I mean, mean if yeah, it did, yeah. Start, yeah. He's going to get it quick. He's going to get it pretty quick. We'll oh, be able perfect. to offer it. And I, what we'll have to do though is we'll say. You'll ha- we'll have to work with the members because we're, we may need two or three weeks where we're going to have to have a decision and then order the stuff. So we're going to need a couple to two or three weeks to get that done. Good point. You're right. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't, I don't know if I clarified enough at the top that we are, we have decided going forward, we're fulfilling Trump club recipes in house for 2022. That's not my resolution, but that's my disclaimer. Um, we're, we're going to be making them ourselves. We're going to be, you know, ch- curating the recipes. We either, some of them will be some of your favorite recipes we used to have on catconnection.com. A lot of them will be new ones that James comes up with and I get to make new artwork. That's my favorite part. And, and we'll make these recipes and 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 ship them out to you and and brew them with you i i'm looking forward to it it's going to be exciting but yes i i when i said oh by the third quarter i meant when i make a resolution when i start doing it uh i i, I like to give myself to the summer james before before doing it <laughs> and anyway uh todd what do you have any specific resolutions that don't include replacing me there at headquarters well, you got me. Um, <laughs> hmm. so, <laughs> uh, you're, you're not at headquarters. You're, you're, you work out of your home. So yeah, that my resolution is to bring you into headquarters permanently. How about that? Oh, my wife will love it. <laughs> I love that. No, uh, I, I really, as far as brewing goes, I'm just going it, to, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a resolution. I'm just going to continue to try to brew on a regular basis uh, you know, I brewed last weekend. I'm, I actually may go ahead and brew that recipe that, that the club is doing this weekend. Okay. Here's my resolution. My resolution is to brew every recipe that we send out to, uh, to the, to the members. But what I would like to do, I actually thought about this last night, Josh, I would like to know what the recipe is sooner so that I could go ahead and brew it and have it done before we before we send it out. 
I, I agree. We, we all agreed on that. That's we're, we're starting our February planning. The, doing it, it, continuing it in-house and, and us doing it is going to be good in the sense that now we are, I'm doing much better prior proper planning to prevent yes. piss poor performance. That's the saying, right? Well, you haven't yet, but you're going to. Yeah, that's my resolution. I have. That's not true. I sent the I sent the email out about the February's planning. I know you got uh, it. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. I, so I, you have started. I, I know you got it. Yes. I, I apologize. You yeah. have started. Yeah. You know, I was I was back I was back in time two days when I said that. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. You, you're just like my wife. No, I pardon me. You actually apologized. You're nothing like my wife. Anyway. <laughs> She doesn't well, can listen. you can you go ahead and tell me the time on that so I can forward that to you? Ah, never. Um, yeah, the fifty minute mark ish. Um, anyway, my resolution. I actually had to write some down. Uh, they're not resolutions either per se, as much as kind of commitments. Our live brew day. I forgot, Todd, how much fun they are when we did our live brew day together. And so I want to also do monthly live brew days. Uh, if that means we'll be brewing what the Trub Club or you'll be brewing what Trub Club's doing and I can brew something else or whatever. Live brew days is part of my 2022. More of that. I want to get James on the next one. I know you don't have the brewing system at home, so maybe we do live brew days yeah, on, a, uh, on a Friday. I think, uh, I think we got next time we do it, Josh, we need better camera system for both of them. For you. What do you mean? My camera. Well, I mean, yours was great, but you just left me with my laptop. I didn't. Oh, you mean because I didn't come over and set up your your system for no, you? No, but I mean, leave me some stuff. You have cameras. So that I you, can... you have cameras. Take the one there at the office that you're using right now. Take that home when you're going to live brew uh, And, and just, but you also have. But at your house, you have the camera also set up on your monitor there. Yeah, but when I mentioned it, you were like, just use your laptop. No, 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 no. I said if you don't, <laughs> I offered you, if you're being lazy, just take your laptop over there and that's fine. That's what I said. And you said, you heard, oh, I'm going to take just my laptop. No, use the use the camera that you have. You already have cameras there. And then, okay, so because we need, we really need a camera that's showing the, 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 the brewing from the top end. I think that really helps a lot because... All we all anybody ever saw the whole day was my ass, <laughs> my <laughs> the back of your head, yeah, ass and and big head. I agree. Okay, how about when I come up? I think I'm coming up again next week for a couple of days. Uh, I will show you. I'll bring a stand, or actually, we're gonna have to order you a stand. Um, I'll bring you one of those stands that I use for our for our our days. And so you're saying I didn't have a stand if I would have wanted no, no, to. No, no, no. You're talking out. about now wanting to do multi-cam. Oh, oh, but okay, I, I'm okay. going to show you how easy it is to do multi-camera. Okay, and, perfect. And, Let's do that. Okay, yeah, because I, I agree with you. Right. If people, like, I agree with you. Um, it's not an... Uh, it's not a marketing thing as much as I, if people saw the intricacies uh, or how easy it is rather, not even intricacies of your brow tag, the above view and the front view, it would, it would make people that much more impressed with how easy it is to use the brow tag system instead of staring at the back of your head and or bottom. Like we did. You're absolutely right. And hindsight's 2020. I don't want to ever view the back of you again for a full four hours or however long the brew day was. Regardless of your preferences, whoever you are, it's pretty well accepted that you don't want to stare at my ass for six hours. Yeah. Our men of Keck and Etching Calendar did not sell well. <laughs> It didn't sell well because <laughs> Todd was Mr. January through December. He was every month. It, oh God. That's sell. a scary thought. So yeah, it? I want to, I want to do live more live brew days. I, another year. And I'm saying this, I want better fermentation pop. Give me the green light for that. And to bring home the brow tide system that I bought or buying. I haven't actually given Todd any. How money. old are you anyway? <laughs> I don't have the space. I, I can do the fermentation at my house, but I want to brew with him at his house. So we, uh, how old are you? Can't you make your own decisions? Not I for, mean, not for you have to, your father has to do it. Not for equipment that I'm taking to his house. <laughs> I want to put a CF 15 or some equivalent of a 18 gallon ish fermenter and glycol at his house. And I want a brow tag at his house, but that's so much equipment and I haven't gotten the green light from him. So that's why I've reserved mine. I have not given Todd any money. So when I keep saying I've already bought one, that's not quite honest. I haven't bought it. I've reserved it on good faith credit by word of mouth. 
<laughs> and Todd accepted it. But um, I want to bring that brow tag home. And, and that that's part of 2022. I want to brew in 15 gallon batches, get in the beer trade with Todd and James, not just Todd. And but have better fermentation because my best beers have been the ones that have had the best t- temperature control through the brew day and through the cold side processing. So um, that that's my main actual resolution is get the brow tide set up over at my pops and get a, a better fermenter. And he's retired. I told him, Pop, start bartering out some beer for other stuff with your friends <laughs> and all that. Like get in the, the gray market. I was gonna call it the black market, but this is like gray area of legality. Like let's let's do some slight Slightly, maybe a little stuff in 2022 pop but anyway i'm gonna edit that part out because fbi is gonna start listening i don't uh, think it's the fbi i think it's the uh well it could alcohol tobacco and fire maybe yeah. but i think it'd be more like the texas uh the texas version right oh, the tabc yeah 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 it would be the tabc listening hi uh, tabc <laughs> if we say tabc a bunch of times maybe they'll a spider will find it it's and like, they will actually listen to this. It's like Bloody Mary, TABC, TABC, TABC. <laughs> the door busts open, canine <laughs> units. Oh, what is this moonshining you're doing? Well, um, what is your what is your father's address anyway? Should we? <laughs> Let me put it on air here. Yeah, he he lives in Comanche, Texas, uh, 1800. No, um, no, anyway, but yeah, I, 2022. I'm I'm excited about it. I'm excited what we're doing with Trub Club, uh, with doing the recipes in house. Uh, going forward and curating them and all that. That's my most excited part. And then brewing more frequently for live brew days. One a month I'm excited about. Well, the last one was for Trub Club. If you ever want to get the heads up on our live brew days, follow us on any social media or join at patreon.com forward slash Trub Club to get the link first. So um, guys, I think that's it for 2022 resolutions, right? You have nothing more? No, I have one more. I am going to try to be nicer to you, Josh. And more supportive of you and more thankful for all the things you do. Cause you really do do a lot for, for, for homebrew, for, happy myself. Hour, for the <laughs> club, for everything. And, and, uh, no, you do do a lot and we, we appreciate everything that you do. Oh, yeah. I know. I feel, I feel appreciated. Um, I, I really do. It's, I wonder how long it'll take me to break that resolution. Well, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm glad you said that on air because I'm going to clip it and send it to you every time you, 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 uh, fail to show me appreciation. I'm going to send it to you. So. Thanks for getting that on air. That's why I don't make promises on air that I, or I, I'm lying. People are going to go, what about all those $5 bits you've lost on air? Yeah, you're right. Okay. I've, I've lied on air too, or I've lost on air too. But anyways, I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all's time guys. I know yep. again, th- uh, we had to do this on a Friday. Sorry for the day late. It's just, it was that crazy. Everyone decided to take vacation at the same time at headquarters. And so everything's fallen on James plate and trying to keep Todd from, from uh, messing stuff up during inventory. That was my favorite part is when you tried to t- participate in inventory, Todd, and people are basically like, go get away from us. Please stop. I, I counted an entire shelf. Uh, I did I, by myself. You did. I did very, very good. You did. So, and you did a lot. I can't believe you did all upstairs. Hey, you did Vilver's area. That, oh, that is was the so, hardest that area. Was so terrible. <laughs> you inventoried a pack rat nest. I did. It was fun. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. I appreciate y'all. And uh, I'll, yeah. see y'all, I'll see y'all next week. All right. See ya. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325 305 6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Imperial Yeast. You'll get a free pack of Imperial Yeast with your Trub Club recipe kits when you join at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. <laughs>